all, I would like to thank you for coming here. Let me introduce myself. I'm Leila, Leila Tifilashvili from Georgia, Tbilisi State University, Institute of Georgia Language. And here I am a visiting lecturer at the University of Tartu, College of Foreign Languages and Cultures. Today I'm going to talk about living culture of three writing systems of the Georgian alphabet. And after my introductory speech, as you are informed, we are going to watch a film which was specially prepared for this nomination. And what about the next film? If we have time, we'll watch it, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Now, may I sit down and let's begin. Okay. So, as you are informed, 16 new elements were added to the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity by United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization at the 11th session we took place in Addis Ababa in November, December 2016. And Georgians are very proud that this list includes the element from Georgia. Living culture of three writing systems of the Georgian alphabet. This element was granted a status of National Monument of Intangible Cultural Heritage of Georgia in 2015. And we are very glad that this organization recognized the contribution. <laughs> And we are very proud that this organization recognized the contribution of Georgia to the heritage of humanity. In the slide, you see the Georgian alphabet, which is called Hegeli. The Georgian alphabet, apart from its uniqueness and beauty, is distinguished from all the other alphabets with its simplicity, perfection, and comprehensive practicality. Besides the exceptional writing, which is called Hedruli, and you see in the slide Hedruli alphabet, Georgia has two more alphabets, the Gluani and Muskuri, which both remain in use today. So you see that instead of one alphabet, we have three alphabets, Hedruli, Gluani, and Muskuri, which all remain in use today, as I told you. First one, this script is Mkhovani script, this one is Nuskhuri script, and the last one is Khedruri script. Not printed letters, but script. Mkhovani was the first alphabet from which Nuskhuri was derived, and then Khedruri. The alphabets can exist thanks to their different cultural and social functions reflecting an aspect of Georgia's diversity and identity. But I'd like to note that Glovani and Nuskhuri are mainly used by the Georgian Orthodox Church, whereas the last one, Khedruli, is used by the state and secular society. So they have different social and cultural functions. That's why they can exist. I'd like um, to talk about this issue in more detail a bit later. And now I'd like to touch upon the question as to by, by how many elements Georgia is represented in the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Georgia is represented by three elements. The first element is Georgian polyphonic singing was described in, <clears throat> on the representative list in 2008. The second element is ancient Georgian traditional query winemaking method inscribed in 2013 on the representative list. And the last one is living culture or free writing systems on the Georgian alphabet inscribed in 2016. So we have three elements. Now, let's talk in more detail about each element. As I told you, the first element is Georgian polyphonic singing. Polyphonic singing has a highly valued place in Georgian culture. The soft traditionally pervaded all areas of everyday life. 
Now we can listen to this talk. A part of it. traditional crevly wine making method. In this slide in the picture here you see crevly. It's crevly. The crevly is egg-shaped earthenware vessel used for making, aging and storing the wine. In the slide here you see a special room, a special place for storing the wine. And you see here, so-called Marani. We call this room Marani. And you see in the slide that cranberries are sealed and buried in the ground so that the wine can ferment for five to six months before being drunk. Cranberry wine making is practiced throughout Georgia, but particularly in village communities where unique varieties of grapes are grown. So it's clearly, <laughs> please remember. And now I'd like to ask you if you know by how many elements Estonia is represented in the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. If you know, <laughs> by four elements, by four elements. The first element is Baltic song and dance celebrations, which was inscribed in 2008. The second one is Seto Lelo or Lilo. No, Estonians, please. Lelo. Lelo. Oh, thank you. So Seto Lelo, Seto Polyphonic Singing Tradition was inscribed in 2009. The third element is Kingdom Cultural Space, inscribed in 2008. And the fourth one is Smoke Song Tradition in Voroma, inscribed in 2014. Now let's move on to Georgia and its location. I think you know that Georgia is a country in the Caucasus, but there are not only mountains, there are valleys as well. And you um, see that it's bounded uh, to the west by the Black Sea, to the north by the Russia, Russian Federation, to the south by Turkey and Armenia, and to the southeast by Azerbaijan. Unfortunately, two parts of Georgia, Abkhazia and South Ossetia are occupied territories of Georgia after the war in 2008. Georgia is located at the crossroads of Western Asia and Eastern Europe, and it was the center of the Silk Road. And because of the specific geopolitical position, over the course of its history, Georgia has mediated between the European and Asian world. That's why Georgian culture, literature, art, and historiography are viewed as reflections of these diverse cultural contexts. Georgia is considered a homeland of the Eastern Renaissance, and it was in Georgia in the 9th and 12th centuries, whereas you know that in Europe it was a bit later. Shotar Mustafa is called the knight in the Panther skin in the greatest work of this period. You know that the name of our country is Georgia, but it's in English, not in Georgian. The native name of our country is Sakatvelo. Sakatvelo. And the native name of Georgian is Katveli. So Sakatvelo and Katveli. 
Its population is about 3.75 million. The Moji Georgia Republic was established in 1991. Georgians practice Orthodox Christianity. Christianity became an established religion in ancient Georgia in 326 AD, so in the 4th century. I think you know that Tbilisi is the capital of Georgia and it was founded in the 5th century. So Tbilisi is a very old city. It was founded by the Georgian king Vahdan Burgasai. Tbilisi is originated from the word Tbili, which in Georgian means warm, as this place in which in warm sulfuric springs. In the slide here, you see the old part, old district of Tbilisi, and Tbilisi sulfuric bath in this picture. The official language of the country is Georgian. The Georgian language belongs to the family of Kartvelian languages. The family of Kartvelian languages is a unique family, is a unique group, not similar and not related to any other language families, and this fact makes it one of the world's primary language families because it's not related to any other language families. There is a new point that Georgian bears certain resemblance only to the Basque language. Um, and, um, but it's difficult to say, but they are related languages. But there are some similarities between our languages. First of all, our language has an ergative case and Basque language has an ergative case as well. And similarities are, first of all, in vocabulary. But it's difficult now uh, to say that they are related languages. The Kartvelian language family consists of four closely related languages. Georgian, Megrelian, Laz, and Swa. So there are four languages in this family. But according to another point, these, uh, there are only three Kartvelian languages, and Megrelian and Laz are only the dialects with respect to each other. Georgian has at least 18 dialects. In the Kartvelian languages, only Georgian language is a written language, and only Georgian language has an alphabet. So Sva, Megreli, and Las, they use Georgian alphabet. Now let me give a brief overview of the Georgian language. Only a brief overview. Maybe it would be interesting for you that the Georgian language has no articles. We don't have articles. Now, what about the stress? The stress in Georgian falls on the first syllable. For example, Sakartvelo, Universiteti, Studenti, Lektori. But I'd like to note that the stress in Georgian is very light. It's not strongly emphasized. How you should raise your voice at the end of the interrogative sentence when you pronounce it? For example, Es Universiteti ya, Lamas ya Sakartvelo. I'd like to note that Georgian nouns do not have gender markers as well. For example, the word for actor, actress in Georgian is sahiobi, which is gender neutral. The word for waiter, waitress in Georgian is mitai, which is gender neutral. Even pronouns are gender neutral. For example, she, he, it is in Georgian is only is, eyes. Pay attention that is the third person singular pronoun is gender neutral and signifies she, he, and it. So we don't have grammatical gender in Georgian. In Georgian, all nouns in the nominative case and do the vowel a, a, e, o, u is the marker of the nominative case. That's why we Georgians put e at the end of every foreign proper name that ends in a consonant. For example, <laughs> Gert is my student and he is attending my lecture, that's why I know his name. is a uh, male name, Estonian male name, but for Georgians it's Gerti. 
My students told me that Gerd is a female name in Estonia. But anyway, for us, Gerd is Gerd. Because we put it in the nominative case and added in. Jan, he was my student from the United States as well, but he is now in America. Jan, and the nominative case is Jan. Adamson is Adamson, because we put them in the nominative case. And note that word listed in the Georgian dictionaries appear in the nominative case as well. Now speak like, of course. And Georgian language has seven grammatical cases. And it's very interesting that Georgian belongs to the group of the ergative absolutive languages, or simply called ergative languages, like Basque language. The ergative case is a grammatical case which identifies the noun as the subject of a transitive verb in such languages. For example, in the sentence, if you see a noun in ergative case, it means that this noun is a subject. The girl wrote or the boy wrote um, in Georgian is Gogundadzera, Pichimadadzera. M and ma are the markers of ergative case. Note that in Georgian the word order tends to be free. So you can use any of the following combinations. The phrase for I'm a student in Georgian is me studenti, I a student and me var studenti, I am a student. Studenti var me a student am I. Studenti var a student am. So you can use any of these sentences. Georgian is the polypersonal or bipersonal language in which all the three persons are marked in the verb subjective as well as objective. And since the verb indicates which person we are referring to, we can leave out personal pronouns, and we often do it. For example, instead of me studentiva, I am a student, we can simply say studentiva and the student, so we can leave out the personal pronoun. So we can say that Georgian is not an easy language to learn. It's very easy to learn Georgian alphabet, but not language. And the central problem is the verb. Georgian verb is very difficult, especially due to its exceptions. But we native speakers don't feel that they are exceptions because they are very natural forms for us. But for non-natives, because it's very difficult to learn Georgian, I think my students will agree with <laughs> OK, now let's go. Oh, let's move to the Georgian alphabet, which is simple. I told you that in my in the language is only Georgian language is a written language, and only it has an alphabet. The unique lettering has no analogies in the world. In this slide, you see Hedroli alphabet, the modern Georgian alphabet, Hedroli alphabet, which consists of 33 letters, 5 vowels, and 27 consonants. Vowels are in right here A, E, E, O, U. So we have 5 vowels. The Georgian script is fully phonemic, which means that each letter denotes a single sound, and each sound corresponds to the same letter. So the spelling is straightforward, and that's why it's very simple. So it means that as we learned Georgian alphabet, you can read any text or any difficulty in Georgian. Now, look in the slide to see Georgian letters, and you see that some letters are positioned above the line. For example, A is positioned above the line, B above the line. And some letters are positioned above and below. For example, G is positioned above and below D. Like English, Georgian is written, written from left to right. And note that there are no capital letters. Maybe it will be strange for you, but we don't have capital letters. Please remember that there are many consonant clusters in Georgian. Now let's listen to the pronunciation of the Georgian sounds and glottalized consonants are marked with apostrophe in the Latin transliteration. Now I trade Georgian alphabet. Now let's listen to the Georgian sounds. 
the most difficult consonant for non natives because sh ch s z s s ch ch h j h now let's practice to the consonants which are peculiar to the Georgian language and maybe the most difficult and challenging for non native speakers to pronounce and note that most of these consonants are positioned in the second row of the slide. Now let's practice. Eucalyptus tre. His toke. Do you like the sound? Akceuli tre. Khmauri treshi. His puro. Mtsavane khasi. Khmeli tre. Tsharo. Tsharo. Nadzli tsche. Khis chrachuni, chriyari, zhangi, zhangiyani kina. Atara tsitsinatela. And the most difficult and challenging consonant for non-native speakers, and the most difficult phrase for them. This one. Pa'akhi, m'khakhe, tsakhshi, chikhinebs. Uh, it's really very difficult um, because um, some of my students were able to say this consonant, but some of them, no, they didn't. Um, for example, Russians can say instead of this, so they uh, say instead of but as for Estonians, they say kh instead of yes. So they say bachakin chachet chalshikefinos. Georgia has a rich consonant system with a three-way distinction between voiced, voices aspirated, and glottalized sounds. In this slide, you see so-called consonant triplets. Consonant triplets which consists of voice, aspirated, and glottalized sound. And it's very important to see the difference between aspirated and glottalized sound. For example, in Estonian you have only voiced and aspirated sound. In English there are only voiced and aspirated. They are not glottalized. And that's why for such people it's very difficult to see the difference between aspirated and glottalized sound. For example, listen to me. P, P. Are these consonants the same for you? Do you see the difference? P, P. Different. T, T. K, K. S, T. Ch, Ch. H, H. So it's very important to distinguish them from each other. Now let's see what difference aspirated and glottalized sounds make because using an inaccurate sound may change the entire meaning of a word. Now let's take this word. Uh, here you have words with aspirated consonants and here the words with glottalized consonants. Kari means wind and kari door. <coughs> if for you it's difficult to say a glottalized consonant k and instead of k you say aspirated k it means that instead of door you will say wind and it's another word the same difference is between chala and chala papa will still <coughs> aspirated consonants and papa 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 do you see the difference or not? Yes? Okay, good. Say, say. Characteristic of Georgian is long sequences of consonants, especially at the start of words. And it's really very difficult for non-native speakers. So we have consonant clusters. Two or more consonants in immediate sequence are very common in the Georgian language. Now let's practice. And the first word you see 
four consonants in immediate sequence. T, R, T, V, without a vowel. How do you think? Is it difficult for us to pronounce it? No. Tui, tui. It's very simple for native speakers. And the second one, there are four consonants. M, H, V, D. Mude, mude. It's simple for us. Four consonants. T, H, V, D. To the yadi. B, R, J, H. Chai, chai. Again, four consonants. P, R, J, H. Chai. Six consonants. M, Z, V, R, T, N. Is it difficult? How do you think? No. For us, it's not difficult. Tukne, And then six consonants. M, B, R, J, H, V. Without a vowel. Tukne, tukne. And in the last one here, eight consonants without a vowel. G, V, P, R, C, K, V, N. But now listen to me. Tukne, tukne. Very simple, if not even for us. So I like to read them once more. <laughs> so these forms are very natural. These forms are very difficult for non-native speakers. Now let's go on. Georgian has no long vowels. So when a group of vowels are get together, they are pronounced separately. And it's very important. It means that in the word, there is the same number of syllables and the number of vowels. For example, let's take this example. Menu in Georgian is not menu, but menu, menu. So we should pronounce separately the vowels, as we don't have difference. Ga a adviers. We should say these vowels separately. Now let's move on to the Georgian alphabet again, and let's talk about the origin of the Georgian alphabet. As I told you, from the family of Cartuarian languages, only Georgian language has an alphabet and very old literary tradition. And the oldest texts that have been survived in the Georgian language are dated from the second half of the 4th century AD. In the slide, you see here uh, the Asantaguli alphabet is written between two angels. These pictures are the same. And we call it Stella of Davati. It was found in Dusheti, Georgia, and is dated to 367 uh, AD. So it's dated to the 4th century. So it's a very old inscription. Here you see a Sultan inscription on the outer wall of the Juvari church. It's in Utrecht, Georgia, and is dated to the 6th and 7th centuries. So, very old inscription. It's thought that the old Georgian alphabet was probably devised from the ancient Greek alphabet around AD 400 as a national script in order to facilitate the dissemination of the Christian literature and translate it. Georgian uh, thus has a five century continuous history of Georgian literature. It's a very interesting slide. Here you see the manuscript, also called palimpsest, which contains two different layers. There are two different layers, as you see. The upper layer is written in Nuskhoi, I mean vertically. It's Nuskhoi script, and is dated to the 14th century AD. And the lower layer, please pay attention, is written horizontally in Bhaglovani script. It's low and you don't see clearly. Clearly, and uh, it represents itself the martyrdom of St. Christina and is dated to the 5th century. The same what is written uh, here in Asantaguli is published here. It's the same, but you don't see here clearly. For example, it's the Asantaguli the. The same letter you see here. And some letters are black. Why? Because this part of the manuscript here is cut. And that's why. But it's not difficult for scholars to understand uh, which word was here. So it's called palimpsest. The lower layer 
and the upper layer. And of course, the upper layer always was written opposite of the lower layer. Why ancient Georgians uh, tried to use this material several times? Because it was very expensive. It's made from the leather of a cow, calf, sheep, so it was very expensive. So they tried to use this material twice. It's a very interesting fact. In 2015, in Grakliani Gora, or Grakliani Hill, it's in Caspi district, Georgia, a specimen of an ancient writing, you see, the specimen of an ancient writing was discovered, which is dated to the 7th century BC. It's very old. And it belongs to a unique individual script, which finds no analogies worldwide. In the scholar's opinion, this fact may change not only the history of Georgia, but the history of word writing as well. It's very interesting fact. The Grachian description doesn't represent a specimen of global writing, however. The materials brought to light are the result of the excavations conducted by academician Levan Chilachuri Negresi, Cafeti, Georgia, in the 1990s and 2000 and 2003, and the pre-Christian Asunta inscriptions dated to the 1st and 3rd centuries AD offer sufficient ground to assume that the Georgian alphabet should have been created in the earlier period, in the pre-Christian period. In this slide you see Asunta inscription of Negresi, which is dated to the 1st and 3rd centuries AD, as I told you. So it's very ancient inscription. Georgian historical sources date the invention of the alphabet back to the pre-Christian period. The invention of the Georgian alphabet is connected with the name of King Parnavas, the third century BC, the descendant of Carthus and the great ancestor of Georgian or Kartvelian nation, after whom the name of the country Sakartvelu derives. Since its adaptation to written form, Georgian has progressed through three alphabets. As I told you, at last begin. The first alphabet is Glovani. You see here Glovani script. The second one is Nuskuri. And the first specimen of Nuskuri script is dated to 835. So we have it since the 9th century. You see here Nuskuri script. And the third one is Khedruli. The first specimen of Khedruli script is dated to <coughs> 980 to 986, so we have it in the 10th century. And here you see Khedruli script, but printed letters. It's not a script, it's alphabet Khedruli, but printed letters. All the three alphabets remain in use today, as I told you. Now, in more detail about each alphabet. In the slide, you see Asuntaguni or Glovani alphabet, which is the first Georgian script. It's bilinear. What does it mean, bilinear? It means that the letters are written between two lines. It's a monumental alphabet, consists of 37 graphemes. And here you see clearly that really letters are written between two lines. That's why I told you that it's two layer. And the letters are inscribed within a square. And they consist of two elements, a line and a circle or semicircle. Gluan is originated from the word Gavari, which in Georgian means round and the letters have elegant round shapes. In this slide you see old Georgian Asuntaguni inscription of the Bonisissioni Church in Georgia and is dated to the 5th century. It's a very old inscription. Asuntaguni means the main letter. In the slide you see Khamedi Codex, Codex which is dated to the 7th century, but it's not preserved in Georgia, it's preserved in Austria. Now, let's move on to Nuskhori alphabet. 
this holy has been derived from Asmata holy as a result of its development. You see that it's not holy, it's not two linear, it's four linear alphabet, angular, let us say angular shapes, and it consists of 38 graphemes, and you have since the 9th century. Here you see more clearly that Nuzhuri is written in four lines, in four lines, with angular shapes. It's very interesting picture, because this picture shows how the Asuntaguli alphabet changed over the centuries, and how the rounded letters became angular in shape as a result of which the Nuzhuri alphabet was formed. Here you see that it's a Suntaruli with rounded shapes. It's Nuskuri with angular shape. So Nuskuri is not another alphabet. It was not created another alphabet. Really, it's the same alphabet, but it's a result of development of the Kurbani. It's another kind of the same alphabet. Nuskuri is originated from the word Nuscha, which means in Georgian the main text. Here you see clearly that it's Nuskuri script. The main text is written in Nuskuri. But as I told that we don't have capital letters in Georgian, in Nuskuri script, Asutaruli letters we are used with this function, with this function. So the main text is written in Nuskuri, but a title but the first letters of paragraphs are written in Asuntaguri. That's why we call it Asuntaguri, so the main letter. <coughs> it's very interesting um, the script. It's modernus holy script written by a cleric, cleric for this nomination. And you see that the main text is written in Nuskuri, and the title is written in Gruan Asuntaguri as in old manuscripts. Here in this slide you see Hedruli alphabet. Its four linear rounded alphabet consists of 33 graphemes and has been developed from Nuskhuri. The picture shows how the Nuskhuri alphabet changed over the centuries and as a result of which the Khaduri alphabet was formed. Now on this slide you see Glovani, Nuskuri, and Khaduri script, and you can compare. For example, it's A in Glovani, Nuskuri, and Khaduri. B, G, D, E, V, Z. This letter, this graphing was only in Glovani, Nuskuri. We don't have now in Khaduri. But this letter is used only in um, scholars. So linguists and scholars, we use only this graphing, but it's not in modern Hedruli alphabet. Hedruli is originated from the word Hedari, which in Georgian means night, as it has been used by the state and secular society, whereas Mgolvanians who have traditionally been used with religious purposes, by the Georgian Orthodox Church, as I told you. Khedruli served the secular functions and has become the most widely used alphabet of Georgia since the Middle Ages. In the slide, you see Khedruli's script written by a cleric again for this nomination. And uh, here you see again Khedruli, but printed letters. And of course, you see the difference between script and printed letters. The inscriptions performed in all three writing systems of the Georgian alphabet, and especially in Glovani and Muskuri, are preserved on frescoes, buildings, church vessels, and vestments. The slide you see a Suntaguli inscription on the outer wall of the Svetitshoveli Cathedral, which is dated to the 11th century. And also they are preserved in manuscript books, preserved in historical Georgian churches and monasteries. For example, in Palestine, Israel, Syria, Greece, Egypt, Turkey, Bulgaria, etc. Today, these are the places of attraction for pilgrims and scientists. Here you see Khamenei, very old manuscript, it's palaces, do you see? 
so horizontally is written in spoolie and opposite vertically in asuntaruli. So you see that there are two layers, lower and upper layers, so it's palimpsest and is dated to the 8th century. Now let's talk about who uses, who practices the settlement. I mean, in this case, all the three alphabets, Asuntaruli, Nuspuri, and Khedruli. First of all, the Georgian Orthodox Church in the country, as well as abroad, uses all the three alphabets with their sociocultural function in everyday life. First of all, it's the Georgian Church. The clergy, that is mostly using Lovanian Nuspuri in manuscripts, as well as in modern printing technology, as liturgy books and church hymns are published in Nuspuri and Lovanian forms. On the other hand, they use Pchedori for communication with the secular society. Then, some readers who read the old Georgian liturgy texts, which are published in Nuspuri and Lovanian, and some readers informally transmit the knowledge of the Georgian alphabet to the interesting members of parish. And without knowing these alphabets, it's impossible to read liturgy books. So what is read in the church, it's published, it's written in a story, always is a story. The choir, the members in which study Kulovan Yerushkuri and the oldest Georgian church hymns are written with those systems. Traditional craftsmen, I mean goldsmith, masters of enamel, icon painters, sculptors, who create church items, decorate with inscriptions. Inscriptions are traditionally found on church facades and interiors as well. This slide is the frescoes by modern icon painters. And you see here old Asuntaruli inscriptions. Of course, the scientists and students, philologists, linguists, historians, art historians, archaeologists, scholars of Katwedian languages, etc., the teachers who teach Hedroli in primary school and the Govanius Hori in secondary school and scopes of the ancient Georgian literature course. The educational system of the country is based, of course, on Khedruli alphabet. Khedruli is used as a basic script during the whole course of school education. But at theological educational institutions, all of these three art systems are used. Of course, Use calligraphy masters, masters of traditional media, publishers, typographers, graphic designers, and so on. So we can say that this element living out of the free writing system for the Georgian alphabet is not only Georgian, but it's world cultural acquisition, and it really deserves its own place among world cultural heritage. Now here in the slide you see the list of some institutions which took place in the nomination process, I can read. National Agency for Cultural Heritage Preservation of Georgia, Arnold Chikobawa Institute of Language, Jacob Ogebashuri Society, National Center of Manuscripts, Patriarchat of Georgia, the Group of Independent Experts and Citizens. And now, I'll take only five minutes, not more. About, let's talk about a very interesting fact, especially for Estonians. The Georgian alphabet has been exhibited abroad for the first time ever here in Estonia, in time, in April 2015, in the National Library of Estonia. This fact once again underlines the remarkable relations between Estonia and Georgia, including in the field of culture. The exhibition in culture of the three writing systems of Georgian uh, of the Georgian alphabet was organized by the Embassy of Georgia to the Republic of Estonia. And this exhibition was opened by the ambassador of Georgia, uh, Thea Akhredyani, who introduced briefly the history of the Georgian alphabet. 
and it's the very important fact for you of May 15, 2015. At the meeting with the Georgian students, the president of the Republic of Estonia, Thomas Henry Kilbus, visited this exhibition. Even your president visited this exhibition. And this fact bears high importance, underlying the support from the Estonian side towards Georgia and strong relations between the two countries. The Georgian alphabet was exhibited at the University of Tartu on May 26, 2016, within the Georgian days in Tartu. The exhibition was opened by the ambassador of Georgia, Thea Ahmediani. Do you see some more photos? And at the end of lecture, you can see here references. And of course, thank you for your attention.